Here's the story of a lowly sophomore who was looking for an A with his friends. One an artist who can draw, a decent baker, one tweets as much as Donald Trump. Yeah, this joke aged well. Here's the story of an all right athlete who was the greatest at editing videos by far, and a ginger, and a creepy freshman. Oh yeah, and Isaac's here. Till then one day all these creatures were collected To make a video that would please Byerly And these creatures were labeled PNN That's the way they became the PNN Bunch The PNN Bunch The PNN Bunch That's the way they became the PNN Bunch Just because I'm in quarantine doesn't mean I can't be in the video, Ryan. How you doing? I'm Mr. Byerly, and I'm officially the advisor here at PNN, but more importantly, I'm a teacher here uh, of math at Cardington. Uh, this episode is all about electives, uh, things that kids can take here at Cardington. If you're a student, hopefully this uh, will give you an opportunity to find out a little bit about some of the fun classes that we have to offer. If you are a parent, uh, you will get to see all about some of the great things that we have for such a small school. So, enjoy the show. Uh, flip through if you need to. Watch and hopefully you'll find something great to take next fall. What do you and the students do in publications? I get that question a lot about what we do in publications. Publication is the course name for the class that creates the yearbook. Um, from week to week we might have lessons on photography design, how to design and capture a great photograph. We might have lessons on how to write a great caption, on how to actually create and use the software that we use to make these pages. Um, and so it's a really varied class. There's all kinds of things that we do. Uh, from day to day it's rarely the same thing twice. I think Cardington's done a really great job of making our yearbook unique. Um, for the last two years we have had a custom designed cover, meaning we created ourselves to be completely different from a cover anywhere else. Uh, the staff also works really hard to pick an interesting theme each year. If you've seen last year's book, we had a Netflix theme and every single page had a tie-in to Netflix. Um, the page numbers at the bottom weren't actually numbers, it was like the progress bar when you see how much of the show you've watched on Netflix. Uh, and so we really try, do try to tailor it to our student population here at Cardington. Have you achieved the perfect yearbook? If not, what can or will you do to make that happen? I have now been yearbook advisor for 10 years off and on and there is no such thing as the perfect yearbook. There will always be things that we can improve, things that we can do better, um, things that we wish we had done differently. Uh, that being said, I'm really proud of last year's book. Uh, the perfect yearbook is one that would represent the uniqueness of the year. And I think last year and this year everybody would agree have been pretty unique and pretty unusual. Uh, something that we hope provides really great memories for our students and staff, something that 30, 40, 50 years from now, when you're old and gray like me, you can go back and look on and say, you know, 2020, 2021, that was a tough year, but there's some really great things happen. So there's no such thing as a perfect book, but there is a book that can, can represent the school year and the student body of Cardington. What are your goals for your students? So I want my students to have a really good time. I want them to produce this, this amazing thing that sticks around forever. And I want them to learn some really great skills. Um, we're really blessed in that we have the opportunity to learn and work with Photoshop. Uh, so we can do some really great things with pictures and creating some graphic design, um, learning a little bit about photography. Um, and how to take really great pictures and a little bit of copywriting. Um, people who might be interested in going into whether it's a journalism field or a graphic design field or people who just really enjoy being creative and even I get a lot of students who want to apply for a yearbook but say well I'm just not very creative. I think you are. We all have different creative abilities. For some people it's the creation of writing a great caption for a picture. For some people it's designing this page. Uh, for other people it's the creativity of creating this beautiful photograph or sometimes it's really ugly photograph but the caption is a really important moment in somebody's life and I think that's what I hope my staff takes away is that we really are capturing moments in some of the most important years in people's lives. What made you join your book? My mom uh, had yearbook in high school and she said it was like her favorite thing and she joined it her senior year uh, and she really liked it because she got to like choose her friends um, and where to put them in the yearbook and she said it was a lot of fun so I wanted to join too. What was your most interesting assignment? Uh, my most interesting assignment would probably be the midterm for your book because I really got to express my creativity um, of photography and 
what I like really like to take pictures of without the limitation of it only being like about school. So it was just a lot of fun to be able to put like pictures of my friends in there and pictures of the uh, scenery that I took um, instead of it just being like according to the stuff. So Miss Walla, what do you guys do in ag class? So ag class is quite the experience of different things. So ag class is actually usually a four year commitment. There's ag one, two, three, and four that you take from freshman to senior year. So you learn everything from plant science and how a plant works to actually jumping in the tractor and seeing how they're harvested. You learn things like public speaking and parliamentary procedure, which is how to run a meeting. We dissect uteri, uteruses, whichever the formal name is, um, and learn about livestock reproduction and, and nutrition and the way that the body works. Learn about welding and woodworking and plumbing and electricity. We learn about hydroponics and aquaponics, about ag business and the commodity market. We visit our school farm, which is 64 acres. Uh, really anything under the sun that you can think of, we cover at least a little bit of between your freshman and senior year. Some cool things about being an ag class, you actually get one and a quarter credit for every year that you take high school ag. So when you graduate, instead of having four high school credits for taking four classes, you're actually gonna have five high school credits for taking four classes. You also, by enrolling in ag class, become an active member of the Cardington FSA chapter, which is our oldest and largest youth organization and club here at Cardington. We go, we have a lot of opportunities to travel uh, within the state, without, throughout the country, uh, even internationally every now and then. We've done a trip to Honduras. So if you're somebody who loves opportunity, wants to be a good person, wants to learn about how to do different things and, and just with the way that the world turns, uh, then I guess the class for you. All right, thank you. So what would you say to someone who's thinking about joining Ag? I would tell them that it's a great opportunity to be able to learn unique life lessons that you wouldn't, per se, learn in a math class or an English class. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to know different friends that you might not think that you would ever hang out with. Some of my greatest friends um, are from my Ag class and I appreciate that a lot. In a normal year we would be able to travel and do all these fun things, but Obviously we can't this year because of COVID, so hopefully in upcoming years we'll be able to do that. So it's a lot of fun, so join Ag. Thank you. Why would you suggest someone to take Art 1? Um, well, part of the Ohio High School curriculum is you've got to get some sort of art to graduate. Um, so my classes is one of the options that falls under some of the music and band. Um, it's a general class, the Art One class. We like to um, do a lot of drawing, painting, printmaking, sculpture, ceramics. So it's a real good basic uh, background of a lot of different styles and techniques and just kind of helps you focus and realize you know, what you might be interested in if you want to take art after that. What art techniques might you learn in Art 1? Um, a lot of different drawing techniques, um, hatching, cross-hatching, how to shade, uh, painting. We do a lot of watercolor techniques and uh, advanced kind of uh, procedures with that to learn how to um, apply the color to a canvas and, and mix and match. And we try to do a lot of printmaking techniques. It's usually a... Um, styrofoam kind of drawing into that and printing images off of it and stuff just to kind of find regular everyday objects you can do printmaking with. What are some positives about taking art too? Um, I, I find that usually if a student comes into art too they are more at a choice at that level um, that they want to be in there they found something they've enjoyed um, we go along the same lines as Art 1 where we do a lot of different styles of art, um, but we kind of up the skill level, the vocabulary, um, and get a little bit more in depth and do a lot more research before we do projects. Um, so uh, often it's a really nice break in the day for students that um, are in classes that are more academic and, and doing lectures and book work. Um, it's a chance to just kind of be creative and uh, kind of find your own way and get to use your imagination a little bit. What might you learn in Art 2? Um, 
One of the styles, one of my favorite projects, we do a monochromatic project, which basically is taking one color and mixing in black and white to get all kind of different shades. Um, people do portraits of that. It's just a real interesting project, and some of my students that per se are a little, a little less inclined with the art talents um, still really get a very nice project. Also, two-dimensional castles drawings are a lot of fun, and students usually really enjoy uh, creating in that style and just doing a pencil drawing of a castle. All right. Thank you for your you time. You are welcome. So if you are somebody that is looking to fill a class period but don't want to take any of those smart classes, uh, we do have the ability to take a games design class. Uh, it's actually called just game design and that game design class is all about uh, board games and uh, games you can play on a computer and group games and role playing games and, and things like that. As far as classes that you can have homework in, I can't imagine that there's a better class to have. And it's usually a nice break up in your day. Uh, things that you can do that are very, very fun and, and you don't mind so much when you have to go home and do some homework. Mobile game design is a different class, a little bit harder than game design class in that we are designing games that you can actually play on your phone. We use a program called Game Salad and you learn all about uh, coding light, shall we say. Uh, you're going to learn how to make games and a lot of people uh, spend a lot of time coming up with great games that look a lot like other games. Others people, uh, they just try to make games that are as hard as possible just to infuriate their friends. Whatever it is, uh, mobile game design is a great class, but does take a relatively intelligent soul to do because it ain't as easy as you think. Sports Analytics is a class that we added a couple years ago where we uh, are teaching you the same statistics that we learned in our actual AP Stats class, but we do it uh, using actual real world, world data from the uh, NFL and we look at all of the data and we make sure that you learn about normal curves and uh, how to figure out what the best quarterback is based on the actual stats as opposed to just what Brian Klinger tells you. PNN is our yearbook class, uh, but it's for video. Uh, we hope that in the years after you graduate, you'll have some place where you can come back and see videos of you and all your friends when they were still in high school. Uh, we try to make videos that cover everything that's interesting at Cardington. Uh, unfortunately, most of this year was all about quarantine, but we also talk about uh, a lot of the cool sports and stuff that go on here. We also inherited a kind of a pay-per-view broadcast thing that we do. So if you are interested in broadcasting, if you are interested in talking on a mic, or if you're just interested in making some fun videos that people would really like to watch, uh, PNN would be a great class to join. Make sure to talk to me, uh, come by, ask somebody that's in the class what it's all about to make sure you know what you're signing up for, but otherwise, it's in a really good time. All right, the percussion class is an entry level, uh, something you've never done before, so you learn how to play snare drum, bass drum, we do some mallets, uh, that kind of thing. Theater tech is about the supporting things that go into making a theater production. So for example, when we go to uh, build a set or do that kind of thing, uh, we've, we've done that with the theater tech class. So uh, we learn sort of how everything works in the theater and then we use some carpentry skills to assemble and paint some of the stuff that goes in there. So that's pretty much what that is. It's about the, the supporting stuff that goes into making a theater production. Uh, guitar and recording has kind of two, it's a sort of a dual class at the same time. You can take it as many times as you want. Uh, the first time that you take it, you will, uh, I'll teach you the basics of how to play guitar. So there's, there's a few different key things that you need to learn, and once you learn those, you can look anything up you want on the internet and discover how to play it. But, so we go through learning basically how to read tablature, how to, um, how to play the chords, what a power chord is, how to do that, and then we put all that together and play some songs, and then each time you sign up to take it again, you end up, you'll learn songs and you'll play those as a, as a part of your grade. So, there we go.
okay, we do a lot of things, but the main purpose of positive leadership is to remove all the barriers that get in the way of a good education. Some of those barriers are student attendance. If they're not coming to school, they're not gonna do, they're not gonna be here to do the work. Another barrier would be their mood, so we learn to manage our mood better. Um, another barrier would be drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. We talk about the, the risks and the dangers and um, trying to decrease use if there are people who do use. Another barrier would be your school smart strategies. Are you using the right study strategies? Are you doing your homework? And if not, we try to talk about some strategies that will help us be better students. Um, I've enjoyed them uh, a lot, actually. Uh, some of the things we learned in that class, I actually put uh, into use in real life, and they do end up helping you. So I enjoy it. I actually like them a lot because it allows you to have social interactions and also um, understand like how to take care of yourself mentally and also physically and helps you become a better person. And it also, again, allows you to have more social interaction, which helps you become better friends with other people. I think people who would be interested in positive leadership would be the kind of people that might be going through a rough time and might need help or guidance and the kind of making it through high school and um, learning different life skills and lessons and all that. Uh, probably people who maybe have a hard time making friends or are not very good at social interaction so they can get that experience in like how to become uh, better at social interaction and talking to other people. The poetry class is going to be a little more intense like from when you are an honors 10, we study poetry and we do like that analysis of poetry and we look at like various like skills that we need in order to analyze poetry. So we'll take that and kind of blow that up a little larger and get more into like in the um, books that we have that we call the chicken packet where it's about language. We'll get into the meter and the rhyme schemes more and then the different like types of poems such as um, like the limerick poem versus like ballads versus those kind of um, qualifications for poems. So really anybody that kind of enjoyed what we did with Honors 10, we'll experiment some with writing poetry but I of course don't expect anyone to become, be like completely perfect at that so it's really just trying it, trying to be aware of like forms and beats per measure and trying to write in a, in a strict form that way. It's probably a little, little heavier on the analysis part than it is the writing because I mean I'm not, I myself am not necessarily like somebody that is super accomplished at the writing of poetry so I'm not the best like set up to say oh gosh you should have done it this way but we will have the opportunity to write poetry and write it within those strict guidelines and forms just to try it basically but it's not like you're going to get it at zero because you didn't do it right it's more like you gave it a good try try with the poetry class to have a balance of getting more into some of the poets that you may not be familiar with because they aren't just like American poets or British poets. So blending a little bit with like the world literature class and looking at um, Italian sonnets and looking more into different um, world views of like different cultures with the poems. We don't always get that in the Honors 10 curriculum, we don't. All, we definitely don't have it in 11 and 12 because 11 is focused just on American literature, like by the state standards, and then 12th is focused more on like British literature by state standards. So it's going to give us the opportunity to experience more views worldwide. Communications is essentially a speech class. And and if you are comfortable giving speeches, certainly you would enjoy speech class because we have different types of speeches. Um, we have the um, expository speech where we teach how to do something. We work with formal debates um, and understand like the debating process. Then we also give kind of more informal speeches, especially at the beginning where you're just introducing a member of the class. So we try to like slowly work up to being in front of the classroom by yourself 
and having an organized speech. And certainly people that aren't comfortable getting up in front of others should take speech class because usually the, the class is maybe 8 to 15 people. So it's a really good way to get up in front of others and speak in front of others if you're not comfortable with it because it's a small group and they're all definitely going to have to experience the same thing. One of the first ones we start with is just interviewing a member of the class and then we also move into things that are a little bit more easier at first where they're more informal like a narrative speech. You tell a story. So you just get up and tell a particular story. Then we kind of slowly move into things that are more specific in terms of their style such as um, a humorous speech. What's the best way to deliver something that you're seeking to be humorous with? Um, the persuasive speech, how do you need to structure, what do you need to use with your language and your style when you're trying to persuade someone. Then that leads into like a formal debate where you're in a small group and you actually run like the two sides of the debate, the affirmative and the negative, and have um, like your rebuttal period. So we have, we start like with some more informal and shorter speeches and then we work up to the very kind of formal organized. Creative writing is probably one of the more kind of freeform classes, so we do a lot, a variety of things. On Mondays, we always look at poetry, but we look at poetry just more from a standpoint of, did you enjoy this poem? What makes this poem enjoyable? What was the lesson? So it's not as intense as like the poetry class, but we just experience lots of different types of poems, and then we kind of leave it at that. On Tuesdays is your free writing and you can write a short story and develop a short story every Tuesday or you can write sh like just pick something out of like a hat oh I'm gonna write about like this found story where it's like here we go here's a photograph write what's going on in it um, so Tuesday's more freeform Wednesdays and Thursdays are always like okay we've got a unit that we're working on what do you want to talk about with it and we oftentimes vote so like we might do a unit on like horror or we might do a unit on film and we might do a unit on like the mystery genre. We have a variety of different things that we kind of plug into our Wednesdays and Thursdays as they develop. And then Fridays are sharing some of our free rights and um, exchanging ideas with each other and getting notes from each other on like how we might continue our free write. And so it's just kind of a big workshop day where we get to share what we've been doing. In creative writing, a big project is if we do the unit that is like playwriting, and then you like write a short play and perform it with your small group, that kind of takes a, a bit of time and it's also a performance up front, so people will bring like costumes and props and things of that nature. Um, another big project is if you are seeking to write a short story and you're consistently writing on that every Tuesday, you develop a fairly large document that you would be editing and preparing for final turn in because throughout the course of the semester there's certain dates where you're going to take one of your free writes and you're supposed to edit it and kind of clean it up and turn it in for like a larger final grade. So it, there's a lot of freedom in creative writing as far as what you write. You could write poetry instead of short stories. Um, you, could, you have a lot of options that way. So that's why I say um, it's a fun kind of way to explore poetry, explore different genres, but I'm not expecting you to become like, you know, a published writer. I'm pretty excited about world literature because there are so many um, things out in society that we aren't quite as knowledgeable regarding because they aren't American or, or British based and a lot of our textbooks kind of focus on like the voice of those types of history and literature. So with world literature, we'll get to experience more Greek and Roman and Italian and Dante's Inferno and Chinese and Japanese and Russian and like the poems and short stories and voices of different time periods and different cultures that you don't normally get necessarily with the textbooks. All right, so there are two different um, electives that I teach, and one of them is called The Hero's Journey. It's based on Joseph Campbell's theory that um, all stories follow the same outline. So we talk about the 12 steps of the hero's journey. Um, we apply it to the very earliest stories, 
on that were uh, passed down through generations and we also apply it to our, our new stories and our new movies. So that one's cool. I also teach, and this is uh, brand new, um, a gothic and horror literature. And so we talk about all the elements that are in uh, gothic and, and uh, horror literature. We read uh, a lot of short stories, and uh, this year we read Frankenstein. I don't know if we'll read that one again this year. We'll go to Dracula or somewhere else, but um, I can do what I want, so that's how we work with that. Hi, I'm Miss Ebert, and I teach World War II through Film and Lit. I highly recommend that you take the class. We do an interactive notebook where we cut and color and bring World War II to life through notes and readings and activities. We'll read a graphic novel called Mouse and we watch a lot of awesome films and have some pretty cool discussions about this really important time in American history. I give my class two thumbs up. You should take it. Hola. I am Profe and I teach Spanish 1, 2, 3, and sometimes 4 if there is one. <laughs> Spanish is a class where you learn Spanish. Um, we also learn music and we learn about the culture of Spain and Mexico and the Spanish speaking countries. So it's a little bit of everything. It has some fun things, some grammar, some reading, some speaking, and dancing and art, and it's a little bit of everything. Somebody would take Spanish if they want to learn another language, uh, dance, sing, and all the fun things that you don't get to do in normal high school classrooms. Adios! What classes do you teach? I teach Introduction to Health Professions for freshmen and sophomores, and then for juniors and seniors, I teach Sports Medicine, anatomy and physiology, and medical terminology. So, the introduction to health professions is preparing youngsters such as all the students here. Uh, it's a freshman and sophomore class to make you get ready for working in the health profession. So we work on resumes and career building as well as the basics of first aid and disease and emergency care. Who would be interested in this class? Um, so it's only available to freshmen and sophomores, but it is a great class for anyone who is interested in going into the health field or already plans on going into the health fields. What is sports medicine about? So sports medicine basically teaches you about everything that I do on a day-to-day -day basis as an athletic trainer. So we learn as far from taping and wrapping to anatomy and physiology um, to first aid training, CPR certification, and how to get the body fit for exercise. So on top of it all, we, we do the preventative side where we get people stronger and faster and as well as treating them after injury, we learn how to evaluate injuries. And then we also learn kind of the managerial side, the business side of athletic training and sports medicine, which has to do with note taking and uh, medical documentation, how insurance companies work with those, and basically just everything athletic training and what I do. What is anatomy and physiology? So anatomy and physiology is kind of what it sounds like. You learn about the body from head to toe, the anatomy, which is going to be your organs, your muscles, your skeleton, all the bits and parts of your body, and then the physiology is how they work in the body and how things come together, essentially. So we spend a whole year learning about how every part of the body and how it works, and this is also a College Credit Plus class. What kind of people will take these classes? So anybody that's wanting to go into any type of medical or health field, um, anybody who's just interested in learning more about their body um, because you, anybody who works with humans, it's nice to know what you're dealing with as far as how the human body works, where everything's located, um, but primarily the health fields are going to be what gear you towards that. Um, again, because this is a College Credit Plus class, this would probably be more relevant to juniors and seniors. Um, because without biology, it makes it a lot more difficult to understand some of the things we discuss. What is medical terminology about? 
So medical terminology is what we call a CTAG class. So you get college credit for it, but it's not automatically on your transcript like the, my other classes through Marion Tech. Um, but <clears throat> the instance of this class is to get you essentially an introductory to everything medicine. So from we take from the anatomy and physiology to its very basics of each body system and then learn about the diseases and disorders that affect that body system, the types of lab tests and medical procedures done on that body system, and then how we, the drugs that treat it and the abbreviations associated with it. So we follow that pattern throughout the entire school year, learning just basically just getting you to recognize this medical terms, um, common patterns in medical terms, and just recognizing them. Well, I think we're really lucky here at Carnington uh, that, especially for a small school, we're able to offer a lot of really fantastic science electives that I personally think are really interesting. So I'm going to talk about some of those electives, at least that I teach. I teach Advanced Placement Biology. Advanced Placement means that it is an international course uh, with an international curriculum, so there are certain things that we have to teach and have to cover. Uh, at the end of the course in May, if you choose to take um, an international exam, you can receive college credit for it. Uh, it is a weighted course, which means you get extra points on your GPA if you take it. Uh, it's also, known, also an advanced science. For AP Biology, in order to take it, you do have to be a junior or senior who had an A or B in their biology class their sophomore year. I also teach uh, genetics, which is a one semester elective science course. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like if you enjoyed the genetics unit that you did with Mrs. Wells in biology or that you've done with me in AP biology. We take a closer look at some of that stuff. Um, hopefully we'll be doing some experiments next year. We'll be crossing some fruit flies and really making everybody crazy with flies in the school. But we take a look at different genetic disorders, um, how different traits are inherited or not inherited, and what kinds of problems or benefits mutations can cause. Um, usually the second semester, the same period of genetics, is a second elective. You don't have to take the two together, but that other elective is zoology. Um, zoology also an advanced science, but these two are not weighted. Zoology is exactly what it sounds like. We just take a look at the different groups of animals, um, how they evolved from each other, the special characteristics that they have. Uh, and we take a look at conservation um, and try to take a look at endangered species that represent every group of animals and why it is that those animals are endangered and what we as a population and as governments can do to try to prevent the extinction of the animals. Physics is one of our elective science classes that continues the pre-physics and physical science. So you're looking at quantities like velocity, force, momentum, electricity, and you will need to have taken Algebra 2, and it is an algebra-based class, so you should be interested in math and science if you want to take it. Um, anyone who is looking to go into engineering, if you're wanting to go into the upper medical profession, so um, med school, or if you're interested in being a physical therapist, this would be a helpful class for you to take. If you have any questions, you're welcome to come see me in room 108. And finally, last but not least, we are one of the few schools in the state that offer what are called a, a dual credit or an integrated course. The course itself is called History of Disease and Microbiology. You would be in the room with me for one period a day all year long, and you actually wind up with two credits for the course. You wind up with an elective social studies credit for the history of disease portion, and with an elective science credit for the microbiology part. And it's exactly what it sounds like. We start off with a real brief history of medicine. What did the ancient Greeks and ancient Chinese think about medicine? How that changes in the 15, 16, 1700s, and then how medicine has changed so much, especially since World War I. Um, and then then we kind of intersperse within that. We take a look at different diseases. For example, we'll start with the Black Plague and talk about what the plague is, what causes it, what are the symptoms. Uh, we'll take a look at things like syphilis, everybody's favorite, um, leprosy, tuberculosis, and then we'll also talk about microbiology, viruses, bacteria, fungi, how they make us sick, how they actually benefit us, and the different diseases associated with each. Um, this time last year we were actually talking about the Spanish flu from 1918, which wound up being kind of creepily prophetic as we wound up closed about a month from now.
Thanks for watching this episode of PNN. Hopefully you found something that you can uh, be excited to take next year, or if you're a parent, something that you can nag your kid to take. Whichever the case, uh, we hope you enjoyed your time here with us. Thanks for watching.